is bacterial endospores. And I don't know if you guys remember, um, but uh, after the World Trade Center incident had happened, there was a lot of people getting these anthrax um, letters, and they would open it up, and then they would inhale a lot of these endospores, which would give rise to viable bacterium and would actually make people sick. And I think a couple of people did die from it. Um, I, d I don't really know too much details on it because I was really young, but it was, it was you know, it was a terrorist act. Um, so, um, <clears throat> gram-positive bacteria, example of anthrax. Let's say that this bacterium here um, senses when his environment environment is unstable. There's, you know, food is starting to become scarce. Um, the water is starting to be evaporated from my system. Whatever. And then through some type of a mechanism that I cannot even understand, it packages or we'll just say packs, compresses uh, its DNA, uh, maybe some ribosomes, um, you know, replosomes, just uh, replosomes, things that you will need to, to survive. You know, replosomes, I'm going to call them vital uh, proteins, um, and then nucleic acids as well. So they'll have a pieces of RNA in there lipids, all that stuff. So this bacteria starts to um, packages all that stuff up. Let's say this is the nucleoid region of it getting packed up. Here is some ribosomes here that it's getting in there. Maybe some vitally important messenger RNA. Um, and then a couple of fatty acid tails. We're not going to go into too much details here, but it's going to coat this in a very thick shell made of the protein keratin. So I'm going to circle it around like that, if that makes sense. So this thick shell, this coat of keratin. And now keratin is a very strong protein. Um, you know, they say that after you die, your hair and fingernails keep growing. Well, that's not so much the case as it is that this, this protein here in my hair isn't easily broken down. It's a very complicated thing to destroy. And in fact, even after cells are dead, there's still their keratin filaments uh, inside of them. So that's pretty cool. Intermediate filaments is what they're actually made out of, but that's beyond the point. But this shell, this coat here, can last for hundreds of years. Some people even hypothesize for millions of years. Crazy. Resistance to extreme heat, and I'm talking like um, even the, the, we may, you know, what would melt yours and I's face off type of heat. Uh, harsh UV rays, and yet it is still a viable cell. So it can last for hundreds of years, and then somehow, by some mechanism, Okay, from within, from the inside in here, this keratin coat breaks and the cell emerges out of it and starts undergoing binary fission again and then is re able to reproduce. How something can sense that its environmental conditions are favorable, I don't understand because it's all being, you know, surrounded in this thick coat of keratin that nothing can get through, yet it can still sense whenever environmental conditions are stable. So... My mind has been blown by that. I don't understand it. It can last for either hundreds of years or for three weeks, uh, such as with the whole anthrax incident. The moment those people opened up their mail, those spores became viable. So that's something that's really hard to comprehend, and uh, I'm sure a cell biologist will know how that works, but that's it.